Oh, we praise the name of Jesus
there wherever you are right now. Lord, your goodness and mercy yes. follow us through the very end. Lord, your goodness and mercy. such an incredible time of worship. If this is your first time with Celebration Church, welcome. We are so glad you're joining us. We'd love for you to fill out a Connect card and you can find that on our website and our app. And if you're joining us in person from the Family Lounge, we'd love to say hi to you in the lobby at the Connect station. We have a currently and it's found on our website and our app. And it's just a great resource to find out what's happening for the week. You can also find that link to register for your seat for in-person service next week. This week, we have our Dream Team Hangout, and it's just a fun time for our serving teams to get together. We break bread, we play games, families are invited. It's such a wonderful time, and love for you to join us. You can reserve your seat for that event on the link you find on, on currently. If you are interested in serving and you're not yet plugged in, text SERVE to the number on the screen below, and you'll get more information and find out ways to get connected to a serving team. Now is the time of service for the bringing of our tithes and the giving of our offering. While you prepare our tithes and offering, I just wanna share again how generous and joyous our church is to give. We are able to continue local outreaches. We continue our longest outreach, which is to serve the homeless community in DC. Just in this past week, we continue to give care kits for the homeless community. They so appreciate that and breakfast. This month with back to school, we just felt a nudge in our spirit to bless teachers. We were told that this is the biggest incoming kindergarten class and we felt, you know what? The teachers need to get a blessing. So as a church, we put together care kits for the teachers. And I know this local elementary school is so appreciative of it. The teachers are so surprised when they get a gift from the church. So thank you for your generous and faithful giving. Let's pray for our offering. 
Father God, we love you so much. We honor you. We thank you for the provision over our lives and the ways that you continue to multiply this blessing. We just ask that you continue to reach so many in our local community, God. We ask you to bless these gifts, bless the giver in Jesus' name, amen. Now is the time of service for an amazing message. Lean in, take notes, and enjoy. Hey, hey, church, how you doing? Pastor Anthony here, super excited to bring the Word of God to you today. Come on, are you ready for the Word of God? Come on, I got some staff with me today. Come on, we can't wait just to sit in God's presence and begin to hear what God has been saying. Come on, I'm telling you, family, I've been loving this series, speaking it on happiness, speaking it on joy, speaking about what does a happy relationship means. Come on. If you missed any of the messages before, we always say, come on, don't, don't, don't leave this message. But after this message, come on, spend some time out. I'm telling you, we've been unpacking. God's been taking this deeper and deeper. Just what he's been showing us. What about pursuing happiness? Come on, somebody. Learn so much. And what does it really mean to pursue happiness? Not, not understanding that our happiness is found in the who, the ha- our happiness not found in what's going on around us. I love when Pastor Keith was preaching about happy relationships. Come on, making sure that Jesus is the one that's invited into our relationships. Even a couple of weeks ago, we, we talked about that. Hey, if you want to put a smile on God's face, one of the best ways to put a smile on God's face, Hannah, come on, is serving him and also serving other people. Come on, God loves a generous giver, and that's just not an offering text. He actually wants us to actually live our life poured out, serving him and serving others. And I'm telling you, this this theory is phenomenal, but today we're going to be talking about draining. We're, yeah, yeah, we, we, we're going to be talking about, because what I, what I found out through my life is a lot of times it's not actually pursuing happiness, pursuing joy is the struggle. A lot of times it's actually protecting our joy is the struggle. It always seems like there's something trying to leech on you and drain you and take things away from you. So actually protecting our happiness, protecting the joy, the peace that God has given us, that seems to be the struggle. We understand we have an enemy and our enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And one of the ways that he does that, he always goes after our, our happiness, our true joy that's inside. And we're getting ready to unpack all of this. And, but what I learned about it, our happiness is all about our perspective. Knowing what actually drains you gives you a good understanding on how to actually defend yourself and attack the enemy. If you don't know where the blows is coming from, you can never put posture yourself to actually protect yourself away from what the enemy throws at you. We understand week by week the enemy is trying to do something to us, but protecting our happiness, protecting our joy, protecting our relationships sometimes can be the struggle. And we also what I'll, I'll have a good understanding, a lot of times it's not, it's really not the enemy. It's, it's really inner me that's the struggle. It's really a lot of times we can blame the enemy. Look what the enemy is doing. The enemy is after this. And all of that is true, family. But I'm finding out more and more that I grow closer with God. It's really not always the inner me. It's the inner me. What's going on inside of you? What's the thoughts inside of you? What's the intake that you're taking on a daily basis? I, I love my wife, Brenda. Come on, she's, she's all on this fitness plan and she's counting her calories. I know you know about that, Eileen. She's constantly taking intake of the calories that's going on inside of her body. She got a meal plan going on. Come on. She's trying. I know she's well, come on. Men like this. She's trying to get the figure right. Uh, all of that stuff. But what I love about it, she's counting the calories daily, tracking the calories because she has an understanding. If I track what goes on the inside, 
then eventually what goes on in the inside will affect what goes on on the outside. Come on, I, I'm going to talk to my men here too. It ain't just the women who's checking their figure. Come on, the men want to get buff and a little bit of muscular. Maybe you, you've been in the gym. You're, you're tracking. You got your protein shake. You're, you're tracking all of that. And you're tracking the calories that's going on in the inside because you want to uh, see a change on the outside. I just wonder, family, do we take the same perspective, the same approach, the same principle when it comes to calorie or as well with our spiritualness, relationship with God? Because the thoughts that we take in constantly on, on a day-to-day basis, yes, Jesus said it best, as a man thinketh, so shall he be. What is your thoughts looking like on a daily basis? Because if our thoughts are not lining up, the very thing that the enemy is trying to steal, he wants to get right between the ears, my grandmother used to say. How, what's happening between your ears right now? What's just your intake? Because a lot of times we have to begin to de-root a thing, unplug a thing before we can actually put the word of God in. A lot of times we have to go through a process of deconstruction before God gets ready to do some construction in your life. So a lot of times we're trying to build on top of something that actually needs to be uprooted. What I'm saying right now is all about your perspective. The enemy in her me. Is actually needs to be deconstructed. So we're going to be talking a lot about perspective because could it be that the very thing that's draining us, the very thing that's draining us just actually needs a perspective adjustment? Because it could actually be that God is sending you on this pathway. God is sending you down this way. A lot of times we would rather have a comfortable life. We would rather have a, a life that's kind of just, just, you know, just in the, the, the goodness, the God, and it, it's just flowing some good stuff. But a lot of times God leads us some places that can get a little bit uncomfortable. And I, I remember, I remember I shared this story with you. I remember we, me and my wife, Brenda, we took a trip to Pennsylvania, up in Pittsburgh. We went to go visit some families. And I remember, I know, God, hey, pray for me, pray for me, guys. I remember my wife said, there's something wrong with the battery. She's been driving a truck, and th- th- there's something wrong with the battery. She just feels that it doesn't have enough energy. It, she, it seems like something's draining it. And uh, the goodness of my heart, come on, pray for me, I forgot. She told me to check it, and and I forgot, and guess what? We get on the road, and we head up into the mountains. We go to Pittsburgh, and I completely forgot my husband's responsibility to check and make sure that the battery was good. So we get up there. We're at the event, and the event is actually outside. And we're in our truck at the moment, and during this time, we're actually, we're, we're, we're just killing time. So we're in there, come on, uh, Pastor Megan, we're, 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 we got the grooves going on, we got the good playlist playing, we're, we're jamming out in there, we're bobbing our head, Katie, we're, we're just having a good time listening to some music. An hour or two later, and next minute, but before you know it, the power goes out. She looks over at me, yeah, yeah, she, she looks over at me, Anthony, did you ever check the battery? In that moment, I'm saying, I'm panicking. I'm saying, I completely forgot that you told me that there was an issue with the battery. And so, you know what, I'm panicking. You know what, I, I go to the trunk and th- thank God we got some jumper cables. I got to ask for some help. Hey, can't come help your boy. I need a jump. And here's the story. I, we, 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 we get in the, after all of that, we get back in the car. We travel back home. And then we, of course, the, the car got jumped. So I go to the, to the, to, to the car, the uh, mechanic store. And you know, I know how to use a hammer and a screwdriver, but I go, I go in and I'm talking to my men right now. You know, a lot of times when you go into the car mechanic store, you got you to gotta stick your chest out a little bit more. You got you to gotta act like you know what you're talking about. And because I'm like, hey, my, my battery's dead. And I think I need a, a new battery. And, and the gentleman began to tell me, he said, are, are you sure it's the battery? I said, no, nah, I'm sure I know how to work on a car. And I really don't know how to work on a car. But I told him, I know how to work on a car. I think I need a new battery. 
So we pay for the new battery. He, he matter of fact, he gives me three quotes. He gives me, you know, you can get the premium battery, and then you can kind of get the middle battery, and then you can get the worst battery. Well, we're not going to get the worst battery. And matter of fact, I don't think I need the best battery. <laughs> I'm going to go right for the battery that's in the middle. And so we purchase the battery, and I go home, I plug it up, and, and you know what? Boom, the car's back on, full power, everything is great. But guess what? Another month goes by, and get the same, my wife looks over at me, matter of fact, she calls me, and she's at the grocery store, and she got groceries in the back of her trunk, and she says, Anthony, the battery went out again. And I, I'm like, I, I, I don't know, baby, hey, I did my husband thing, I, I thought I fixed it, I thought it was the battery, so I take it, we got the jump, and we go back to the car store again. And then I walk in with the battery. I say, hey, my battery went out again. It must not be the battery. And the gentleman, the same guy, he, he looking at me saying, I, I remember you. Did, I told you that it probably, I say, yeah, yeah, I know. It, it's probably the uh, defibrillator or something like that. I don't know. That's not a, not a car term. I definitely know. I tried to throw something out. I just wanted to make sure, make him know. I know something about a car. But then <laughs> he, he said, you know what? It's probably not the battery. It, it's probably... The connector that's on the battery that's draining the car. And then so we go out to, he takes a look at my connectors and he looks at it and he says, yeah, yeah, your battery's actually fine. It's not the battery that's the issue. It's the thing that's connected to the battery that's actually draining your battery. And then when I was lit, I said, wow, you're, you're preaching to me right now. I said, yeah, yeah. He said, no, because if you, if you the, the, the battery, the thing that's supposed to give you energy is now being drained by something else. The battery is placed to give energy, but the battery can't do what the battery needs to do because there's something interfering with it. The connector is interfering. And matter of fact, he said, hold on, I got something for you. If you put this over the connector, it will actually protect the connector. So now the connection is smooth. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now, but the connection will be smooth. When we get connected to God, he will protect that relationship. The battery won't be drained anymore, the battery will actually be what it's supposed to do and give you energy. I just wonder, even for our own relationship, that we go through seasons of life feeling drained, wondering what's going on, wondering, questioning God. And what I'm finding out, even in my own life, that definitely it's not God that's the issue, that he's not the issue, it's how we're constantly being in connection with them? How do we protect our happiness? How do we keep the enemy away? And what I love it in Psalms 23, we know King David. David writes this psalm that I love so much. It's a favorite quote. It's probably the, the first scripture that I learned because my grandmother used to have it on a wall right in the, in the bathroom. You had no choice but to read it. I love this scripture. It shows the cadence of David's life. One minute David's high, one minute David's low. Despite what David was going through, we can see in this scripture in Psalms 23 that David continuing to put his perspective in trusting and believing that God will see him through despite what he will be going through. I will continue to put my trust in God. So as you have your Bible, give, just get ready to turn to Psalms 23. If I can give a title for this message, the message is draining with a question mark behind it. Let us pray, family. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you so much, um, even for this moment right now. We understand that we get to sit at your, your feet even right now to hear your word, to hear everything that you're getting ready to say. We love you for that. So even for the message that's getting ready to go forward, we understand that there's, there's some that could be in a season of draining, drainage right now, tired, weary, just, uh, just not clear about what the next step may be. But we honor you for this moment right now. We know that you said that you would never leave us, that you would never forsake us, that you will always be with us. You will be our energy. You will be the strength that we need. And we put our trust completely in you. It is in Jesus' name 
Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen, amen. So we find ourselves in Psalms 23. And what I love, let let us begin to read through. And I love how it starts out. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pasture. Come on, doesn't that just sound, it just sounds like a nice Saturday morning. Come on, picnic. The wind is blowing. Come on, early fall. It's not too hot, Hannah. It just feels good outside. He makes me lie down. You, you just got to say that so calm. He makes me lie down. And get, then it said, he leaves me beside quiet waters. Come on. This is spa treatment right now. Look at, look at David. This is, this is a five-star treatment. He refreshes my soul. Come on, God. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. And then he goes into verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley. What's going on? Hold on. We were... We, we were in green pasture. We, 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 was besides, we was besides still water. How did we get from still waters to now we're in a dark valley? Dude, look, look at David cadence here. David is saying that God, when I'm, when I'm being led by God, look at it says in verse 3. He said, he guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, sometimes following God's voice, following God's obedience leads you to a dark valley. What, what do you do when you're following and trusting God and you find yourself in a dark place? Look at David here. The reality is, yes, it's dark. The reality is, yes, God led him here. The reality is that sometimes when you follow and trust God, it will lead you to some uncomfortable places. But I want to throw one point at you right now. The right perspective of my current place leads me to joy. Having an understanding, point one, place. Having an understanding of my current place in the season of my life, if I have the right perspective that God led me here, I can actually begin to give joy because I have an understanding that his word said that he would never leave me, that he would never forsake me. Even in the darkest valley, David found joy. David found joy even in the darkest valley. I love it that even we can go, we can also go back even more into the Old Testament. Anybody know Jacob? Jacob, he was being, he was being terrorized by his brother. No, they wasn't playing tag. Esau was trying to kill Jacob. And Jacob was running for his life. You can read it in chapter, Genesis chapter 28. Jacob's running for his life. And matter of fact, Jacob finds himself all by himself late at night, laying on a rock. And he goes to sleep and, and God begins to speak a word, a dream. God can speak a word to you right in the deepest, darkest valley that you will ever go through. It doesn't matter where you may find yourself. Jacob found himself pretty much at rock bottom and God was still speaking a word. God was still reminding him of his dreams, his promises that he had for his life. It doesn't matter what you're going through. God can still meet you in the darkest place that Jacob was laying on a rock all by himself. He wakes up from his sleep after God spoke the word. And the first words that came out of Jacob's mouth, surely the Lord is in this place. Somebody has to receive that. Surely, you got to speak that over. Surely the Lord is in this place. Regardless where I'm at right now, surely the Lord is in this place. Even in my marriage right now, surely the Lord is in this place. For that business that you just started, surely the Lord is in this place. Come on, for your health right now, surely the Lord is in this place. Jacob, David, perspective could have been off at this moment. They could have been very confused at this moment. Why? Because they're all by themselves. A lot of times we struggle with seeing or hearing the very thing that God has spoken to us because we can easily find ourselves by ourselves. 
See, the inner me could have actually, that's what Jacob could have, could have been struggling with. The inner me could have said to him, God is not with you. The, the inner me could have said that, you know what, God has left you. The, the inner me, could, God could have easily said, you know what, you disobey me over here. That's why you're in the darkest valley. No, but David wrote and said, when I'm following God, sometimes he leads me through the darkest valley. See, never allow the reality to outweigh the promises that God has spoken to you. His promises actually outweighs what you're going through right now. So my perspective is, despite what it may look like, despite what my current place may look like, God is still with me. God is still here. I love it in Isaiah when it says that those who wait on the Lord... They will mount up on wings. Come on, I was sharing this with the staff. They will mount up on wings and they will be renewed. When they mount up on wings, God will give you a higher perspective of what you're going through. Don't just live in a season of sitting at a, a ground level and trying to gauge if God is with you. When you connect with God in your happiness, when you connect with God through your joy, God would take you to a higher perspective where he would give you a vision that only eagles got. You can always see what God is doing in your life. Could it be that your perspective actually needs to change of the current place of where you're at right now. Because if we just look at it from a ground level, we will only get a half a picture of what God is doing. But if we actually allow God to mount us up on wings, we can actually get an eagle's view of what God is saying. And I love it as he goes down. Come on, look, look, look. keep reading. Look at it, it says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The right perspective of who is my comforter leads me to joy. Check it out. The right perspective of who is my joy, who is my comforter, where does my happiness come from? The right perspective of where it comes from leads me to joy. Can I share this with you? I have to say this to myself. We have got to stop giving people God's expectation for them to release joy in our life. We're constantly putting people in God's seat. So now when people disappoint us, now we're frustrated. Now we're feeling like we're draining. But God is saying, stop giving people my place of authority in the seat that where I supposed to be your source for all joy. Yes, we want to have happy relationships. Yes, we want to have happy marriages. Yes, we want to have happy friendship. But God is saying, no, be very careful with putting people in the seat that belongs for me, that seat belongs for me. Can I ask you this question? What's your comfort food? What's, what's your comfort food? Uh, I'm going to take you even, even, even a little bit into my, into my life. I'm laughing because I'm thinking of my wife. She, she, she makes fun of me so much for this all the time. And comfort food. Yes, I have comfort food. I think we all have comfort food. Don't just leave me out here by myself. I think we all have comfort food. But it can be one of them days, Pastor Chris. It can be one of them days, you know, come on, the, the week just got up to you. Come on, you, you just been going through a lot. So I, I get home, have, finish up my day. It's time to kind of chill out. Um, we, we, Brenda, we watching TV and getting ready to shut the night down. And I can look over at my nightstand. Come on, you know my nightstand I got. I got the word of God, Hannah, come on, yes, I got the word of God on my nightstand. I got, I got the current book that I'm reading, Pastor Chris, I, I got that there. But then also, <laughs> I got my good old oatmeal cream pies right there on my nightstand. Yeah, I don't know what your, what your midnight snack may be, but for, for Pastor Anthony and his household, we love some good old oatmeal cream pies. And I, yes, and you would think, if it's been a rough day, you would think, I, 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 would want, I would want to tell you that after a rough, stressful day, I would go for the word of God. I, I would go for that, that good current book that I'm reading. 
But to, in actuality, what I would go for, if I had a rough day, I'm reaching for that oatmeal cream pie. Come on, I'm reaching. That oatmeal cream pie just does me right. And my, and my wife, Brenda, always says, you're not young anymore, Anthony. And we, we kind of get in a debate. I say, I'm still young. The devil's a liar, and, and the devil get behind me, Satan. The devil is a liar. I'm not, I, I am young. I'm only 36. She said, no, you, you keep eating these midnight snacks at nighttime. And then you wake up in the morning, and the very thing that you ate last night is draining you. The very thing that you ate last night is upsetting your stomach. The very thing that you ate last night is making you sluggish. If you start, you have to watch what you're eating when you need comfort because the very thing that's supposed to give you energy is now actually draining you. What's your comfort food? Because when, we, when, when we're looking for joy and happiness and we're looking to be fueled by God, instead of going to God to get our joy, instead of going to God to get some happiness, we're actually going to oatmeal cream pies. I don't know what your oatmeal cream pie may be right now, but we have got to get away from oatmeal cream pies and get in the proximity of God. Because when we need comfort, just like David said, the rod and his staff, they comfort me. I'm in a dark place right now. We have got to stop choosing things for a temporary feeling, but waking up in the next season of our life where we're drained, we're frustrated, we're confused, we're looking for God to do something, but we continue to choose the wrong comfort food. See, knowing God is your comforter, even in the valley, protects your happiness. Even in the valley, that knowing that God is with me, he still protects me, so my joy is protected. My happiness is protected. My perspective is placed on God. Despite what my season may look like, my joy, the enemy can't touch my joy because it's, it's protected. All I'm saying is be very careful of what your comfort food may look like in this season of your life. Maybe it's the ice cream in your life. I don't know. Maybe it's certain people in your life. So that's what point two is, is that we have to be very careful of what people that we choose to actually be our comforter. Because just like we said, if we give people God expectation, we will always live in a season of feeling defeated, deficit. Because people can't give us joy. Our true joy comes from God. God is your comforter. David said that God is my comforter even in this. It's like I said, what you eat will either drain you or give you energy. But if you continue to eat the word of God, if you continue to be in God's presence of everything that's going to give you energy, no, it, the word of God doesn't drain you. It gives you what you need to keep going. We have got to start giving gas station treatments in our relationship with God. You know, come on, come on, Hannah. Give me, uh, give me, give me five on pump one type of relationship. We could, we, g- g- give me h- how much is five dollars going to take you in the DMV? You're going to be back at the gas station again. Don't just give God a five dollar treatment because you're not going to go that far. No, God says I'm looking to fill you up with joy. I'm looking to fill you up with pr- promise. I'm looking to fill you up. I am your confidant. I don't want just a temporary come a drop in a bucket. No, I'm here to give you what you need so that you can keep going. Let's give God a full relationship. That God just don't want a temporary here, you spot and go there and go there. No, God says, come to me, all who are weary. I will give you life. God is looking in this season of your life to fill you with so much joy that you won't have to go over to another comfort of food no more. You don't have to worry about an oatmeal cream pie. You don't have to worry about ice cream or anything like that. No, God wants to fill you up so you can get away from the comfort of food of your old season. Amen. And he goes in. I love it here in verse five. He said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. If you're taking notes, even point three is provision. Provision. I love it. It says the right perspective of my current seat leads me to seeing the provision. If I have the right perspective of my current seat in this current season of my life, it actually illuminates, it highlights the provision that's in my life. 
See, David is in a dark valley right now. David has an understanding that, you know what, in this seat where I'm at right now, despite that I may see my enemies around me, despite the frustration that might be around me, despite what I'm going through, I still have a seat. And guess what, Hannah? The Lord prepared it. The Lord prepared to see, and all, all I need to know is, despite what I may be going through, despite that the seat might seem to be a little bit uncomfortable right now, all I need to know is, did the Lord prepare this table? Because if the Lord prepared this table, this is a table that I will always eat from. If the Lord prepared this table, even in a dark valley, I will still eat this. Matter of fact, David was saying in this way, that the table will be, be prepared in the presence of my enemy. What's the thing that's draining you right now? What's the thing that's trying to pull all the energy out? God is saying, even in this text right now, I won't even remove you from it. I'll prepare a table right in front of it. Somebody has to receive that for their season of their life right now. Sometimes we're looking for God to remove us from a thing, but God is saying, I will prepare a table right in the front of my health situation. I will prepare a table right in front of what I'm going through on the rocks of my marriage. I will prepare a table for you right when you're having struggling with raising your kids. I will prepare a table for you right in the midst of when you don't know what your next may be. I will prepare. Somebody receive that right now. God wants to prepare a table for you to sit at, for you to eat at. A lot of times we can easily look at this text and say that God was sending David to his next, but actually God was preparing David for his next with the provision that he was giving up right in the midst of the valley. Learning how to trust God in the valley brings you peace, which always gives you an understanding of where your true happiness comes from. So I love it that, that don't allow worry to drain you. Don't allow worry, anxiety to actually drain you, but actually give it over to God. Give it over to God because God wants to prepare a table for you. I wrote this, it said, he will feed you right in the midst of your enemies. Just begin to think about that right now. What's draining me? What's, what's draining me? I think that's a good question to even just ponder on this week. What's draining me? In this season of my life, what's the very thing that seems that, that always becomes like a leech? It's just, it's draining. I, be, I really do believe God is saying, I, I want to give you breakthrough in that season, in that area of your life. And what I love as we get ready to close out is that my happiness is protected because I am protected. Look how David penned this. I love it how he penned it. Look back in verse two. He says, he makes me lie down. And then he said, he leads me besides quiet waters. God is looking to always be in front of you. In Romans 8, 31, say, if God be for us, who can be against us. If God, I love how it says in the King James Version, come on King James, I love how it says, if God be for us, who can be against us? God be for us. God is just not for you, but he wants to go before you. And anything that you're going through right now, God has a desire to always go before you. In this season of your life right now, guess what? God is saying, I want to go before you. Before you even step into that, I'm going before you just so that you know before your footsteps in that season of your life, I am going in that territory. I am going over there to fight the battles on your behalf. So when you get there, the ground will already be holy because I have went before you. When we get in proximity with God, God desires to always go before you. He goes into verse five. He says, you anoint my head. With oil, my cup overflows. Look at it. Verse 2, God goes before. Verse 5, the oil covers. Understanding that God goes before me, but also understanding that God covers me. He protects me. So whatever season that I'm going through right now, my joy is protected. Why? Because I'm in proximity of my God. And then he goes into verse 6. He says, surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. 
Not only does God go before us, not only does God cover us, but God has your back as well. God has your back in this season of your life. That goodness and mercy and love will follow you all the days of your life. Understanding how you move through life that the Holy Spirit is in front of you, that the Holy Spirit is covering you, but also that the Holy Spirit has your back. So regardless of what we may be going through, regardless of the very thing that seems like it's draining me, I love it that we can easily walk in in a season of knowing and having an understanding that the peace of God is always here. It's in front, it's covering you, and it's also in the back. And as we get ready to close out, I love it how David ended this whole chapter right here. He said, I would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I love it where even one translation says, all the days of my life, I would dwell with the Lord forever. Can we receive that today, family? Even as a church right now, can, can we receive that today, that all the days of my life, let our desires to be in the house of the Lord and dwell together. Because when I'm at the feet of my God, whatever I'm going through, whatever the thing that's trying to drain me, I get my energy when I'm in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. My family is restored. There are breakthroughs in my marriage. There are breakthroughs for my kids. There's breakthroughs in my health. When I dwell at the feet of the Lord all the days of my life, God is looking to continue to Refill us. God is looking to continue to give us peace. God is looking to continue to give us joy. God is looking to do all of those things when we dwell in his house all the days. Come on, then your breakthrough is in the house. Come on, come on, the very thing, your promise is in the house. Come on, you're, the very thing that God is speaking to you right now is in the house. If we dwell in his house, can that be your, can that be your exaltation today? Can you just continue to, to speak that over your life, even throughout this week? One thing that I desire is to dwell, dwell with the Lord forever. Can I pray for you? Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for this moment. To even as your psalmist said, to dwell in your house forever. Maybe that's a word for somebody even right now, Lord God. Maybe they're struggling with or what it, even what it means to dwell. It seems like there's something trying to pull us away from dwelling, being with you. But we know that you see everything that we're going through, even right now. And we ask that your hand of covering begins to touch them, even where they are right now. We ask that you be, yeah, you be the comforter. You be the one that lead them. You be the one that guide them. You be the one that speak to them, knowing that restoration relies in your hand. They only need one touch by you, Lord God. Speak to them even right now. Give them peace. Give them understanding. And even for the next one, maybe, maybe there's someone even right now that's, that's looking to dwell with you forever. And maybe that decision is actually announcing you to be Lord and Savior over their life. So even as we lead them into a prayer, maybe that's you right now un under the sound of my voice. Maybe you're, you're, lis you're listening to the message. You're saying, you know what? That's, that's what God is speaking to me, that I want to dwell in the house forever. You want to make that declar declaration today. I just want to lead you in a simple prayer, a simple prayer, but a powerful prayer. It's the prayer of salvation. It's saying, you know what, Lord God? I want you to lead me. I, yes, I want you to save my soul, soul, but I want you to lead me all the days of my life. Forever and ever. Just repeat these simple words after me. Say, Lord God, thank you. I honor you. You are my Lord and Savior. I am a sinner. I repent. I confess and I believe that you are my Lord and Savior. You died for me. You rose for me. You are seated, seated in heaven. And I love you so much for that. Lead me. Guide me. All the days of my life, I announce you, Lord and Savior, over my life. Amen.
Amen, amen. Hey, we are celebrating with you. Come on. If this is your first time or maybe you're rededicating your life, I just want to invite you to the Connect card. Simply fill out the Connect card. Come on, we want to hear from you. We're so super excited for you. Don't let anything that's draining you stop you from getting closer with God. His peace is here. His joy is here. We love you so much. Enjoy this, Enjoy your day, family. That was such a powerful message. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget, reserve your seat for next week. Find that link on our website and our app. Every Sunday, 8 a.m., join us for prayer. Text prayer to the number on the, bo on the bottom of your screen and join us. Thanks for being here today. We'll see you next week.